Hey guys, Demi here with Admiral Off-Road, and today we're going to be working on the disc brakes on our Jeep Cherokee. Let's get started. Step one is going to be to jack up the Jeep and remove the tire. Remember, since we're working with the axle in the air, we're going to want to use a jack stand. Now that we've got the wheel off, we have access to our caliper. It's, the caliper is held on with two bolts. One is going to be right here, and the other one is right here. They're just on the back of the caliper. You're going to take them off with a 13 millimeter wrench. With the two bolts removed, now we can remove our caliper. It should come right off, but sometimes it takes a little bit of prying. Oh, there we go. Now that we've got this off, we don't want to hang it from our brake line, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on the uh, control arm here. There we go. Now, if you're going to be changing your rotor, this would be the time. You could pull it straight off just like this. Um, sometimes they might be a little bit frozen in place. Mine are relatively new, so I'm not going to be changing it anyways. Um, but that's why it comes off so easy. Um, so to hold it in place, we're going to take a lug nut and go ahead and just tighten it down and keep it from moving all over on us here. There we go. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to remove this uh, old brake pad. I'm only going to remove the outside one though. I'm going to keep the inside one on and you'll see why in just a second. The way to remove it is pretty easy. You're just going to take a screwdriver and there's a little gap in here that you can just pry up on and the old pad should come straight out. Now the reason I'm leaving on this inside one is if you can see this piston here, this is what happens when you push on your brakes, this piston will push this brake pad in and it's going to squeeze on your caliper. The problem is I can't push this out by hand and my new brake pads are going to be much much thicker than these old worn out ones. So to do this I'm going to use a C-clamp and I'm just going to squeeze this and compress this. I like to use the old brake pad. That way if I damage it, it's just the old brake pad anyway. I don't want to do that with my new ones. So I just put my brake or my uh, C-clamp on there. And you can see it compressing already. And there we go. From here, I can go ahead and remove the inside brake pad, and we're ready to install our new ones. The next thing we're going to do is remove and grease the little metal sleeves. Now, the reason that these are here is it's these uh, brake calipers are not like the brakes on a bike, where the brake pads squeeze from both sides on the disc. Instead, there's just a piston on this side. So what happens is it pushes on the brake pad from one side, and then the pressure moves the whole caliper side to side to squeeze uh, to squeeze the disc. It doesn't squeeze from both sides with pistons, it squeezes from one side and then these allow the, the whole caliper to move back and forth so it can put pressure from both sides. Because of that, because it moves so much, we are going to make sure they are nice and uh, greased. You want to make sure you're going to use a grease that's not going to damage the rubber bushings either. I'm just using some specific uh, brake caliper grease. It says it's fine with all the rubber bushings and anything you would need. Um, so that's what I'm going to do, just grease them up and slide them back in there. There we go. Now that those are all lubed up, we should move nice and freely, no problem. Let's take a look now at the brake pads themselves. So I want to make sure we put the right brake pads on the right side. So if you can see, these are the old brake pads from the passenger side, and these are the new brake pads for the driver side. Now how do we tell the difference? If we look on the back, both brake pads have different, uh, different clips. So this one goes to the outside, and this one goes into the inside where the piston is. Same thing on the old one. So this is where the piston is and this is the clip for the outside. If we look, so again, this is the passenger side, this is from the driver's side. Um, 
this one only has one little clip thing on the outside and this side will have two. This is the opposite. This has two on one side and one on the other. So this would be the wrong side. If we look at the old ones from the, uh, the driver side, so the ones that we're replacing right now, it matches up perfectly. So you want to keep your old brake pads, make sure you match them up so that way you're putting them on the correct side. While we're at it, let's just go ahead and take a look at the difference in thickness for the brake pads themselves. So these are the new ones, obviously, and those are the old ones. Barely anything left, so these should be a lot better. Now we're ready to go ahead and re uh, replace our brake pads. So this is the clip that goes in with the piston side. I know a lot of people like to put some uh, of the grease on the back here. They say it makes it a little bit quieter. Um, so I'll give that a shot. I've never really done that before. Um, but we'll give it a try, obviously, to make sure you're not going to get any grease on the front. So we'll just put a little bit in here. Say it just cuts down on noise or something. I don't know. We'll give it a try. And you should just be able to push it straight in place. There we go. And the same thing with the out one. Again, it's got a different style clip on it, which is just going to slip right into these ones here. So, again, we'll put a little bit of this grease on there. Um, just on the back side. And slide it into place. There we go. Another good area where it might be a good idea to grease, let me move this out of the way, is wherever these brake pad brackets here are going to make contact with the metal. As these slide back and forth, they might get a little bit of wear. So you might want to put just a tiny little bit of grease on the, uh, on the insides here, excuse me, right here and right here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Just a tiny little bit where I can see they're rubbing. Cut down on wear. Okay, now we've got everything uh, properly greased and ready to go. We can go and uh, reinstall our caliper. So there's these two little hook things that have to go on the back and then just the one tab in the front. So I think it's usually easier to attach the back and then try and get the front from there. So let's go ahead and give you that. All right, we are very close to being done now. Uh, last thing as far as uh, working down here goes is going to be to reinstall our two bolts. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on there as well as a little bit of uh, lubrication just for this thing sliding back and forth. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. So just a little bit of Loctite on the end and some of our grease just here where it's going to be sliding around. I want to leave them loose for now so you, so you can line them both up and then tighten them down once you got them both going. Now that we've finished tightening up the bolts, we're done down here at the caliper. The next thing we're going to do though is we're going to check the brake fluid reservoir. I noticed as I was compressing the piston here, there was a little bit of brake fluid that kind of leaked down onto the ground. So I'm assuming as we compress the piston, we forced a bunch of fluid back up through the hose or back up through the lines and into the reservoir and it just overflowed. Um, so we want to make sure we're not going to run ourselves low on fluids. So we're going to fill up the brake fluid and then we're going to get inside of the Jeep and we're going to pump the brake pedal a couple of times. Since we've uh, compressed the piston so much, there's a lot of space between the brake pad and the caliper. Um, so we're going to pump it a couple of times and the first couple of times you pump it, you're going to notice it's really, really soft. After you do it a couple of times, it's going to build up the pressure to bring everything back together where it's supposed to be and then it'll feel normal again. Nice solid pedal. After we do that one more time, we're going to go ahead and check the fluid um, just because we're going to be pumping fluid back into the system. It'll probably get a little bit low. All right, so we're underneath the hood of the Jeep now. Right next to the air box, you'll find your uh, brake fluid reservoir. And yeah, I can see it's been overflowing. Um, so if we check it now, oh yeah, that looks really full. Um, so I don't want to, I don't need to add anything to it right now, but after I go ahead and pump the brakes, I'm definitely going to want to come back and check that again. As you can see there, when I pump the brakes a couple of times, um, you can see the uh, brake pads moving closer to the caliper. Uh, the first time I um, pumped it, the pedal went all the way to the floor with almost no resistance. Um, so it's very important that you do that because if you were driving and you had to stop 
uh, that'd be a very, very bad feeling. So make sure you go ahead and pump your brakes a couple of times, firm them up. And now we can see the level has dropped a little bit. So I'll go ahead and fill this, uh, make sure we are completely full, and then we should be able to put it back down on the ground and be good to go. And just for, uh, for reference, the Jeep Cherokees do take uh, dot three brake fluid. Um, I'm looking pretty full. I'll add just maybe a tiny little bit. Um, but yeah, dot three is going to be what you want. There we go. Now that we're done with everything, we can go ahead and put the tire back on, lower the Jeep down, and take it for a test drive. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. And if you like what you saw here, please like and subscribe. If you want to see how to bleed your brakes, go ahead and click over here. And if you want to see how to change your diff fluid, click over here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.